wanna be here for you, baby And I'll be a man of my word Speak the language in a voice that you have never heard I wanna sleep with you forever And I wanna die in your heart in a cabin by a meadow where the wild bees swarm And I'm gonna love you Like nobody loves you And I'll learn your trust-making memories of us I wanna honor your mother I wanna learn from your paw I wanna steal your attention like a bad outlaw All right, welcome everyone to the wedding reception for Rod and Amber Bean. Wanna just uh, join me in welcoming Mr. and Mrs. Rod Bean as they make the grand entrance. Thank you, everyone, for coming and uh, enjoying our day, special day with us. Um, we have some more people that want lunch. Uh, first, we have Vernon and Krista Gingrich. I met them back in my parents' church, and uh, we've been fairly close ever since. Do you have anything to say about Krista? I mean, <laughs> I'm blanking. Okay, she's awesome. she knows Krista. <laughs> yes, she's, she has a really welcoming personality. <laughs> uh, next we have Randall Zare and Sue Zacharias. I've known Randall since, I don't know. We were trying to figure it out this morning. I have no idea when I met him. But we've been friends for a long time and I got to know Sue through that obviously. Um, and and got... I've known Sue since high school. Um, yeah, cool. like grade 10. Nine or ten, and we didn't see each other for years, but we got in touch again when I started dating Rod, and he knew Randall. Welcome them. Next we have Dennis Benitez and uh, Jacinda Martin, I think. <laughs> They are also engaged. They're soon to be married. Um, I met Dennis the same time I met Fred. Um, they were neighbors of ours. And uh, I think we were both out biking and were waving at each other and went from there. I think we were about 12 or 13. And I used my mom's phone to call his mom and told his mom to tell me to, or to get Dennis to come talk to me. And uh, it went downhill from there. And I've only met Jacinda a couple times, but I really enjoy spending time with her, and she just has the sweetest personality. I'm excited for when they move up here. Uh, next, we have Dennis's brother, Fred, the older of the two, and his girlfriend, Caitlin Gerber. I met Fred the same time I met Dennis. Um, we've been very close ever since. Neighbors and uh, good friends and run into each other at church once in, once in a while. And Caitlin I've also known since high school. It's been five or six years now. And yeah, we've just stayed really close. We've had some ups and downs, but we're all here together, so. <laughs> And next we have Carissa and Melissa. That is my maid of honor and my bridesmaid. And they are really special. Um, Melissa I only met a couple years ago. Carissa I met in high school, but we just got to know each other last year. And it's been really good. Uh, I think we'll hand the time back over to Vernell. 
wherever you went to. And uh, enjoy your meal. Okay, now that we know everybody and uh, the formalities are over, we can get down to the real part of the business here. The food. So you will notice a couple tables uh, behind most people, in front of a few, that the cooks are putting the food on there. So we're gonna start uh, to the right of the hot food table and we'll go counterclockwise around it. It will be served buffet style, so you have to get your own. The tables are numbered in order. Uh, one, two, and three, obviously. We'll start with the head table and go that way. So I will announce when it is your turn to go. At this time, I'm going to lead in prayer for the meal and then we can start so let's bow our heads for prayer here. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you that you have blessed us with life and being today. Thank you that you've brought Rod and Amber together and that you've blessed them with a loving relationship for each other and you brought us to this day. I pray that you bless them as they go forward in their married life and Help them to grow close to each other, closer to each other, and I pray that they would honor and glorify you as they walk from here. Pray that you would uh, bless this food that we are about to partake of, bless the cooks, and may we use it to your honor and glory. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Never found nobody like you. I saw you order up in my tie. And suddenly I wanted one too. I got your name, got your number, and we talked till they turned on the lights. I was looking for a long time. I didn't know that night I'd find my person, my heartbeat, my slow dance, my Sunday morning sipping on coffee in bed. My no. Never been more 
a sipping on coffee in bed. My no, and you know, best friend, the steel of my t shirt, my reason for speeding home from work, my saving grace, my everything. I've never been more sure that you're my person. I was a boat stuck in a bottle that never got the chance to touch the sea. Just forgot on the shelf, no wind in the sails, going nowhere with no one. I was one in a hundred. I'm gonna love you like no. Trust making memories of us. I want to honor your mother, and I want to learn from your part. I want to steal your attention like a bad outlaw, and I want to stand out in the crowd for you. Well, thanks to everybody that put work into the food there. It was great. Uh, it was real good food there, and uh, I'm sure people put a lot of work into that. So we're going to have a few speeches here, family speeches. Uh, we're going to start with Amber's family. You want to start, Dederick, and then uh, Dave is having one. And I think Lori and Jenny are going up together. So if you want to take your places now, that's great. And I'll just leave the mic up here in the holder.
Uh, I'll decide to hold the mic that way it doesn't fall to the ground. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, thank each one for coming here. Um, I think it was a very enjoyable service. It was a very enjoyable day. Also, want to welcome Rod into our family. It's been a um, great pleasure learning to know him over the last uh, year and a half or two years. Um, when he first started coming around, I wasn't sure about it, but um, he's kind of started to grow on us. So we uh, welcome him as a son into the family, and now we have two sons, I guess. Um, our family uh, consists of three girls, as some of you may know, but um, I was always told the boys will come later. And uh, I can uh, testify that that does happen. And um, with Amber, she is um, our youngest, or uh, we always called her our baby, even though she is the tallest of the, of the three. Um, she's the only one that's ever called us and said, Dad, my car. A couple of years ago, she uh, rolled a car end to end a couple times, but uh, she had a concussion, but otherwise, we were thankful that she was not injured much. And um, if you um, go through that, it uh, takes a long time, takes a lot of patience, and uh, we're thankful that uh, she has recovered fully from that now. Now, Rod might say that there'll be times where she still doesn't pay attention to what you say, and she's, she'll try to blame it on her concussion. But um, I know that um, it worked for a long time, and she got away with it. But um, say um, it, um, it is improving. It is, we're glad that she is recovered. I didn't write a long speech, um, but um, I am um, thankful that we could have this day, and um, even though it was not what they wanted, but uh, due to all the restrictions that we were under, um, we were glad to have it, what we were able to have. And again, thank you and welcome to our family. Okay, Amber, our little sister that we can't really call little anymore. <laughs> um, what should I say? Some of my favorite memories of growing up together were spending hours on the trampoline making up all kinds of random games that didn't really make sense, or sledding down the steps of our deck because we didn't have a hill in the winter time. <laughs> um, and Probably one of our most used toys were about our hundreds of Hot Wheels that we would drive up and down the stairs like one at a time <laughs> and have all kinds of parking garages all over the place. And I know to this day she still likes cars when she has a bit of extra money. Ooh, car parts. <laughs> um, yeah, Amber and I actually share a birthday and I still hold it against her. I was turning eight, she was turning four. She crawled out of her car seat and sat on the cake. <laughs> so to this day, we don't share birthday cakes. At, so. um, but Rod, we want to welcome you to the family. It's great having it been. It's been great having you around. Yeah, we love you both. I guess now I'm supposed to have a speech. Um, uh, I'm not sure where to start, but I guess the first time I met Rod, I was up on the ladder fixing a door, and I come down, and he was, I forget what exactly he was doing with the cows, but I think cleaning out the stalls or something, and he comes up to me, and I guess he knew kind of who I was already. I'm not sure if he had stalked me and I kind of liked Amber already, and I just stalked who she was friends with or something, but um, he came up and talked to me and uh, uh, talked for a little bit, and then I guess a couple 
weeks later than they started dating and I didn't get to know him very well uh, until we started working on his trucks. I th remember the first project I helped him with was his uh, black Denali that he had. We replaced the transfer case on it. That's when I actually first got to know him. And since then we've done lots of uh, exhaust work and and truck stuff together. It's been really great. Um, and I've been calling you my brother-in-law for a while now, but now you're officially my brother-in-law. And as far as <coughs> Amber, I guess I kind of went to school with you. You were a couple grades, or I'm not sure how many grades behind me, but met her there and, and then uh, didn't really get to know you till I guess Lori and I started dating. So it's been great knowing you both and I wish you all the best. Thank you for those speeches there. And uh, we have three more. Uh, we have a speech by Rod's dad, Leland, and myself, and then one by his brother, Wes. So. Thankful for everyone that came. Something I, I didn't have a lot to do with, but I'm glad there was people that worked at it. <clears throat> I have a speech here, and hopefully Rod's not too nervous. My wife and I want to welcome you into the Bean family, Amber. You are a brave soul to join our clan. <clears throat> I think you already know this. <clears throat> but you are married to a miracle. The first days of his life, the doctors gave him a 50-50 chance at life. God answered many prayers on his behalf, and after 10 weeks in London Hospital, he came home to a happy family. <clears throat> Rod tends to be one of the quieter ones in our family, but you can be prepared for anything when he speaks. It has usually been thought through and is often witty. We noticed this at a young age, when two or three years old, he asked his mother, Mom, do birds spit? <laughs> she really didn't think so. He replied, well then, how do they feed worms to their babies? <clears throat> That's Rod. That's just how he is very random. He may randomly suddenly be frying bacon at midnight, or mixing up Kool-Aid or anything else that whets his appetite. But don't be surprised if there's half of it left in his bowl. Just on Thursday night after the rehearsal, he came home searching for food. He found a pound of ground beef in the fridge, and in a short time, with a few tips from Mom, he had made sloppy joes. But yes, a good portion was left on the table. That's okay, Ron. He may randomly decide it would be nice to switch out trucks and get a hankering to buy back that heavy Chevy he sold a while ago. That's Rod. <clears throat> Sorry, Rod, but we happened to find some of your school compositions. From that, we can predict some of your future. When he was 10, he, woke, he wrote that in 20 years, he would like to be a farmer with only Fent and John Deere tractors. He will have 500 cows, a Pinto, and four Belgian workhorses. So in about seven years, Amber, you could be a farmer's wife. <laughs> if he holds true to the next paragraph he wrote, his home will be happy and blessed. These were his words. I would like to be a godly person and someone who serves God faithfully. I want to take my children to church and teach them godly ways. I want to be a person who helps those who are in trouble. 
and that's a notable characteristic of Rodney. He will go out of his way to be there for someone in need, whether it's a sister with the misfortune of having a tree branch fall in her car or a brother hitting the ditch. He'll be there. Our prayer for you as a couple is that you together would do just as he aspired when he was 10. Seek the Lord with whole hearts and God will bless you. Do come home to us anytime. Congratulations, Rod and Amber. It's a great day. It's been a long time coming, and we're very happy for you. Rod and I, I uh, we're about five years apart, if my math serves me right. Didn't have a lot to do together growing up. He was always that uh, little fellow in school, you know, playing. But a classroom or two down, you know, and didn't do much. Uh, when he was a little older, and uh, then we worked together and off and on, it seemed I'd start something, or, and then he'd tag along a little later or something, or vice versa, he'd go find a job, and I'd help out here and there for some reason. Not, how, not sure why that all went that way, but there's a few things I learned about Rod over the years working with him. One thing is, if you go pick Rod up in the morning, do not attempt to have a productive conversation in the first half hour. It's, it's not worth it. He will come out of the house, looking down at the ground, throw his lunch box in the back of the truck, set in the door, and me being the person I am, I'll talk about something that happened yesterday, something that's going to happen tomorrow, and yeah, probably talk too much, and he'll be sitting there, and yeah, uh-huh, yeah, sure, yeah, uh-huh, but just barely say anything and but if you're traveling a little ways to work you get in maybe an hour and then he starts to get bored or awake or something and he'll start saying witty things or uh, torturing the people that are unfortunate enough to be in the pickup truck with him on the way to work so that's how Rod is in the mornings so don't break anything too big on him in the morning. I don't know how he is at night. I think he's pretty tired usually, but so you'll have to tread carefully there, Amber. Rod is a, always out for a laugh, especially when you're working with him on the job. It's, um, he'll be thinking up something to do to somebody else whether it's uh, earplugs and drink jugs or uh, I don't know what else. There. He's all done already. Memory's kind of short. I, when uh, it was mentioned about Amber and uh, car parts, I thought, you know, they talk about matches made in heaven and whatever all, but uh, I think you two fit together because you'll have a vehicle and... Uh, a little bit extra cash, and they'll be like, yeah, man, need those car parts. I need that exhaust. I need that. Yeah, man, I really need those spacers and those front wheels. Or uh, Just, yeah. Um, and it's starting already, like uh, new tires by the time he gets back from the honeymoon, you know. And, well, we'll see. But he does have a love-hate relationship with vehicles. Um, he hated a minivan pretty bad. It showed. I think Fred and Dennis had something to do with that early on. Uh, I don't know if it improved how he drives or not, but uh, Rod is pretty determined. Um, if something is not going his way, he will get very quiet and things will move. Um, I might say quite a bit and not get much done, but Rod usually um, says very little, and something will probably move. He has been uh, a very good uncle to Casey there. He is really good with children. I just, I think he will be a good uncle to Leo, too. I have that feeling. 
he cares a lot about children. He has a very big heart, as was said before, especially if he values what you're talking about. It'll show. He'll stick up for the underdog most days. Welcome to the family, Amber. Really appreciated you, getting to know you, and you're quiet, very quiet as well. Um, I don't feel like I uh, know you very well yet. I'm sure we will get to know you better, uh, but we're very happy to welcome you to the family, and hopefully uh, we'll see you back soon. So we have one more speech here with uh, Wes, and then... So you can come up here now, Wes. I'll get it, get it ready. Well, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to the Mr. Bean and Bride comedy show <laughs> featuring Mr. Bean and his bride. <clears throat> I would like to offer my condolences Condolences, pardon me, congratulations to my brother. You got a good woman. I know that much. And welcome to the Circus Amber. Rod has always been a quietly helpful guy. A good example of this is just, uh, just before the wedding here, when I was laboring up the hill with a few guys helping me, out of the blue, Rod shows up in his wedding suit and ha hand to the wheel to help me up the hill. I was, that stood out to me right away. Well, one last thing I'd like to say to, say to you, Rod. I say last thing, last thing here. I'd like to encourage you, um, give it a couple of years and you'll be as tall as Amber. <laughs> God, God bless you both. Okay, uh, there is dessert that is prepared. I think that's the next thing in line here. And it is to the table to the left of where the hot food was. There's coffee and drink refills over on the far side of the food table. So help yourselves. Again, we will do it in the same order that we had the first course. We'll start with the head table. And uh, when they're done, you just go ahead and we'll follow through from tables one to four. After that, there will be some more speeches. I'll announce them once we're done with dessert.
was a love Wasn't made for me and you I said love Was made for me and you You know that love Was made for me and you Water towers are made for hearts and names. Friday nights are made for football games. Fallen leaves are made for falling in. Front porch steps are made for good night kissing. And I was made. Jobs are made for spending cash. Second dates are made for going fast. And early curfews are made for sneaking past. 2 a.m. is made for pissed off dads and I was made. miles I had it all planned drove all day to ask your dad for your hand well it seems there's more people that want to talk um, I don't know if it'd be better if Rod would go outside for now or not, but 
I think it's okay. We will let the groomsmen have a speech now, one at a time, in order. And uh, if any of the rest of you want to have a speech as well, feel free to fit in where that works in. And then uh, Rod and Amber are going to have a speech, and they're going to dismiss us after that. So that's going to bring us to the end of this reception, and we'll start with that now. Well, Ron, I didn't prepare any uh, speech, so I think you're pretty safe to stay in here. <laughs> um, no, I feel pretty honored to be here today. Um, it's good to see so many people here, despite restrictions, or that we could all gather. And Yeah, it's been really good to know Rod. I've known him for, while well, we're sitting there, I think I calculated five and a half years, give or take. Uh, when I showed up at church, we were, he was attending Cedarville. I was attending there when I moved up north to start farming. I got to know him there. So I think the first time the first time I saw him at church there, uh, we just looked at each other and didn't really say a whole lot. I think the third Sunday that I was there, um, we actually started talking, and we seemed to really click on vehicles. So I was driving a car at the time, and he still had a car with a – I think the clutch was slipping at the time. So <laughs> – we were, so we really clicked on that, and it kind of grew into a better friendship. We had a lot of uh, high-speed driving and just a lot of stunt driving with our vehicles back then. And I guess not a whole lot has changed. Um, yeah, so fast forward. Um, you're a married man. I wasn't expecting to see that happen so soon. <laughs> Um, but I think you'll be able to keep living wild and free. Um, yeah, so I didn't really have a whole lot planned to say, but I was remembering back to my wedding. You had a speech at my wedding, and, uh, well, I hadn't given you any options, so I knew I didn't have any option either, but you uh, mentioned trucks in your speech, so I thought I should get back at you a little bit at the time, or, yeah, get back at you a little bit today. Um, at the time, you were driving a 2500 diesel truck, like the Duramax that you had. Uh, you had a straight pipe, and it was looking really good. Uh, just this morning, I was hearing you talk about it again and how much you wish you could have got it back. And uh, I was driving a 1500 truck. Uh, it was straight piped as well, and he thought I should get a real truck. He's in the speech to me, he's like, I should get a real truck. Well, now I own a 2500 diesel with the comments, and he owns a 1500 truck, so... I guess it's reversed on you, Rod. The challenge is on you. <laughs> so, anyways, we wish you the best. Um, we're super excited for you. Uh, looking forward to hanging out lots when you get back and over the course of the summer and the winter. Hopefully, put a lot more parts in your truck as you break and, well, <laughs> connect on that. So, hope you just have a really awesome honeymoon. I uh, wish you guys all the best. He didn't quite say it exactly like Rod did. He said, get a real truck. <laughs> anyway, um, I not like I know either of you very well, but got to know Amber a little bit through Caitlin, but then mostly from, well, Vernon and Rod hanging out all the time, and Amber, of course, had come along too. So I'm really getting forward to, looking forward to getting to know both of you a lot better. Um, I'm shy, so it takes me a while, but I'm realizing how great you two are and knowing that, well, as long as you two are finding things to fix up together, <laughs> Amber and I will be along for the ride, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, I appreciate you two a lot. Um, Rod has shown me a lot about showing up for people no matter what. Um, I was really thankful that he was the one to come by when we had a collision a while ago picked us up and made sure we got home safe. That was, I really appreciated that. And Amber, her common sense and level head, um, and just like her love for beautiful things has really inspired me to just like pursue becoming more of an individual myself, like learning what I like and standing up for myself. So love you both a lot and so excited for you.
Hello, everyone. Um, I don't really remember the first time that I met Rod, like he mentioned, but one of the first things that I remember us doing together was going on a road trip to Ohio uh, with a couple other guys. Uh, we found common ground on this trip, and uh, his sense of adventure is pretty keen, and I think that's what I like because we ended up doing more and more stuff together. I don't remember a lot of the things we did. That's probably a good thing. It's good that pages turn and we grew up a little. Um, there were a lot of crazy times, a lot of cruises. Some had destinations, but a lot didn't. Um, but one thing that they all had in common is that we, uh, we figured all the world's problems out. And there was always a lot of funny stuff involved. At least we thought so. So one, um, one time on one of these late night cruises, Rod and I were driving around and we pulled into a car dealership and we pulled up to the mechanic shop roll up door and on that door it said, uh, please sound horn to open door. So we did, but nothing, didn't open. So we tried again, like honked a few more times, but the door still didn't open. So anyways, we thought that was pretty funny. We just sat there and laughed for like five minutes, I bet. But, um, but yeah, just, I don't know, just the wit is pretty fun. Um, there's a lot of stories that I don't remember, but we spent a lot of time laughing together. Uh, the nickname is Funny Man. <laughs> Um, the thing that sticks out the most, though, to me about Rod is his serious side and all the times he's had my back. And uh, he takes a real interest in whatever I was up against, whatever I was struggling with. Um, he'd always like help me stay calm and sometimes after laughing at me, of course, for whatever I was freaking out about, he tends to like to do that. But, but he showed up for me a lot of times. Um, Give me lots of rides and um, pick me up. I call him like two in the morning. He come pick me up. <laughs> so that's pretty outstanding. Um, I just uh, appreciated the positivity, positivity, and the help that he was to me. And uh, I would, I would actually be a different man today if, if it wasn't for Rod. Um, so happy for you guys today, and I pray for God's blessings on your life together. Um, take care of him. He's legendary, Amber. Congratulations. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, definitely good to be here with all the restrictions and everything. I'm happy that I could be a part of it. Congratulations, Rod and Amber. Um, wish you all the best. Um, as Rod mentioned earlier, we uh, met way back soon after we moved up from Paraguay. And uh, yeah, it started out with, you know, just waving at each other from across the road. And then eventually started calling home. And then we started going on bike rides. Always came swimming here. Had a lot of fun during the summers, like after school and stuff. Um, and about the minivan that uh, Bernie mentioned. Um, yeah, so there was one, one summer afternoon where Rod was going to show us how to drift that thing. And uh, he, he took it down the field lane. I don't know why you drift down a field lane. But anyways, he, had, he all of a sudden got too much speed. And before you knew it, there was a corn surrounding us. We were in this uh, corn patch. I guess his uh, oversteered the one way too much. And yeah, we ended up in the cornfield. Um, and then also later on, I'm not sure if it was that minivan or, the, or another one, but Rod had it all painted up, polka dot colors, pink, I believe. And uh, he had like a full on dirt bike track built around his property. And we took that thing out 
driving it all over the place, almost hitting sheds and stuff. Sorry, Leland. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, it was good times. But anyway, so the minivan just wouldn't die on us. And uh, it was out of fuel. There was no coolant left in it and everything. And Rod was like, well, we have to destroy it. So there was this uh, gravel pile that he decided we were just going to back up against. And so he drove ahead and just backed into it with as much speed as possible. <laughs> and my neck may be a little sore for me, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm honored to be in your, in your party, Rod. It means a lot. Um, you know, knowing that I was also with the guys that helped dump you into the pond here a few times <laughs> during the summer. But uh, overall, we had a lot of good times, and uh, I look forward to many more. So congratulations, you guys. Hey, everyone. <clears throat> so I just read a quote this morning, and it said, 4,153,237 people got married last year. So, not to cause any trouble, but shouldn't that be an even number? Well, I'm glad that there's two people here that got married today. Um, like was mentioned before, um, I met Rod like maybe 10 years ago. We're biking down the side road, and yeah. We've seen this uh, kid on the bike, and he's just waving at us. We're like, oh, we'll, we'll decide to wave back and see what happens. And then I think we uh, met at church. And then um, soon he was over at our place, and we were sledding around the place and, yeah, had lots of fun. We definitely came to this place quite a bit in the summertime. I remember the phone would ring, and they would say, Leland Bean, and we are like, oh, well, we know we're going to the pond this afternoon. So... Get our bikes and water bottle ready. <clears throat> um, yeah, Dennis did touch a bit on the dumping you into the pond. I remember you had your jeans and clothes and the brand new boots, and <laughs> that did get end, end up getting wet. Um, yeah, I'm super proud and honored to be part of this uh, bridal party. Yeah, it's a legendary pr party. Um, Amber, he's a gem, take care of him. And we need to, yeah, take care of him. We still need to harass him a little more yet. Thanks. All right, so my friendship with Amber began on my very first week of high school. Um, I was homeschooled grades one to 10, so High school was kind of big and scary for me. Um, I didn't know anyone in my grade, but it didn't take long for that to change. So we were both sitting on the sidelines of a volleyball game um, that we were probably too shy or more likely just too lazy to join. And we just started talking. Our friendship took off from there, and we were basically inseparable the rest of high school. Um, then her accident happened, and she was out of school for a while. And that was probably the worst part of high school for me. I was just, like, lost without her. Um, so I knew at that point our friendship would last long past high school and probably the rest of our lives. Um, through the past six years of friendship, we've had many highs and lows and have made memory, many memories together, um, a lot of which are probably best thing between the two of us. <laughs> when life moved, uh, moved us apart physically for a year, we didn't talk as much, um, but I knew you were always there for me, and our friendship didn't rely on us seeing to each other a lot or talking a lot. Um, we were all would just come back to talking and everything would be just the same. Um, that being said, I'm so excited for the two of you and I'm excited to watch your relationship grow and move into this next state, step in life. Um, you two are an amazing pair and I must say my matchmaking skills turned out pretty well in this one. And I think it's pretty cool that your special day falls on the weekend pretty much two weeks or two years later of the day that I introduced you, so that's pretty cool. It's been amazing to see where life has taken you, and I'm so excited for you guys. Congratulations.
Rod and Amber, the day you've been waiting for is here, and what a beautiful day it has been. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Melissa. Amber and I have been close friends for a number of years. We met at church, and uh, we connected immediately. Over the years, we've realized just how much alike we are, um, even randomly discovering we had individually made the exact same pin number. My respect for this tall girl, who is quickly becoming one of my closest friends, grew immensely. My uh, memories of days spent with you were often spontaneous. Shopping days would usually start with driving together to the mall and deciding almost immediately upon arrival that thrift stores are superior. Adventures with you were always interesting because you tended to not give all the information needed for the adventure until it was too late. You decided to bring up your fear of heights only when we got to the very top of the Ferris wheel and then decided to freak out for all seven times around the wheel. <laughs> we would spend long hours at local coffee shops talking about life and where it would take us. Amber has always been an independent person who never let on to me that she needed a relationship in order to live her life to the fullest. So you can imagine my surprise and curiosity when she randomly started showing interest in this guy named Rod. The first time I heard of Rod from Amber was when I noticed a pretty cool hat sitting on the dashboard of her car. I asked her where she got it and Amber got this smirk on her face and told me, yeah, this guy named Rod that I just met through a friend gave it to me. I told him he had a nice hat and he just gave it to me. I didn't think too much of it at the time, but when she said that they had been talking on a regular basis and were planning on hanging out, I put the pieces together and figured out that this was probably more than just a friendship. It didn't surprise me that with Amber's easygoing, funny, and caring personality, some amazing guy would come along and sweep her off her feet. As the months went on, I always told Amber that Rod was a keeper. I could tell that you guys truly brought out the best in each other. You two share similar interests, like doing projects on vehicles together. If it wasn't Rod's numerous trucks that he has owned in the past, then it was Amber's car that she bought recently. It has always been interesting for me to keep caught up on these big plans, even though most times I smile and nod as I pretend to understand the car lingo they're speaking. I am so excited for you too, as you continue making your big plans, not only for trucks and cars, but also for the rest of your shared lives together. I'm a strong believer that we don't meet people by accident. They are meant to cross our path for a reason. Clearly, God knew what he was doing when he brought you two together. God has a plan and a purpose for your love story, and I know that as you continue to trust him, he will continue to guide and direct your relationship. Rod and Amber, congratulations, and I wish you all the best as you start your new life together. Well, a little less than a year ago, when Amber and I decided we were going to hang out one-on-one -on -one for the first time, I never thought I'd be standing here on her big day and just like, hanging out with her all day and yeah, being so excited for you. Um, we haven't spent a ton of time together other than like going for coffee and all of that good stuff, but randomly we did decide to go up to Killarney and go hiking. And I don't know, I guess that's the time I learned that you're very adventurous and you're always down to like climb a good tree or just, yeah, go hiking and I just remember we got to the top of the mountain we were hiking and we had to wait for this couple to finish getting engaged or something. So we just sat down on some rocks and fed a squirrel and just talked for a while. And yeah, that trip was when I was like, yeah, I found a kindred spirit. So I'm um, really excited for you. And I don't know, I just, I guess another story involving both of you. Yeah. Um, when I realized that, yeah, I think you guys are meant for each other. We were working on your car actually. Um, I think we were putting a cold air intake in, and we were reading the instructions, but that wasn't going too well. And then, I don't know, Rod was there, and he would just, like, guide Amber, but he wouldn't take over, but he'd just kind of, like, instruct her the way to do it, and we finished it eventually. The instructions are not helpful, by the way. Just find someone that knows how to do it. <laughs> It'll go smoothly. So, yeah, congrats, you guys, and 
I'm excited to see your new home. Um, yeah, I hope you have a good honeymoon. Well, thank you all for coming again. Thank you for, for to the people who helped and provided and got the food ready for us and everybody that made everything look pretty. And uh, thanks for all the kind words and last kind words and unkind words and all the words that happened about us. We're glad for you all, whether you had good stories or bad ones. Um, I'm glad we somehow had stories to be told. Means we're doing something right, I guess. Um, Fred and Denny, I guess we can kind of thank my grandma, who couldn't couldn't make it today. But if I remember correctly, she put some cookies together and took them to your mom, and that's how I figured out that you know you guys go to Ethel Church there, and I was at Cedarville, and you know we might see each other once in a while. Up until then, I just thought you were some random neighbors with black hair. <laughs> it's been good. Um, I guess for our honeymoon, we're planning to go to Alberta. There's not much much option. We're gonna we have two cabins rented a week each, and uh, see what we can see. And hopefully, the restrictions don't get too much in our way. We'll be living in Glen Allen, a um, little town in the valley. Um, come see us anytime. Let us know so that we can make food or something or not. Depends who you are, really. And uh, we like visitors, and we will enjoy every minute of it. And yeah, don't know. I don't think you have anything to say. Um, thank you all for coming, and making the very best of what we could uh, with everything going on and hope you enjoyed it as much as we did and enjoy the rest of your day from uh, now on. Thank you. Let's have a closing prayer, then you can clap. Father in heaven, thank you today for friends and family and just another beautiful day that we could spend together. Thank you for the work you have done in all our lives. Thank you for bringing me and Amber together in such a perfect way. Thank you for working everything out with COVID. And uh, thank you for giving us strength through all the difficulties. God, I pray that you would uh, cast your blessing on us as we go forward from here. Um, grant everyone safety on their way home as they clean up and as we go about our daily lives. God us and keep us today. God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you are dismissed. See?